Hi, I'm Guy Eastman, your host, and this is Eastman's Hunting TV. On today's episode, we're going on a DIY rifle hunt for trophy antelope bucks. We're hunting way south, almost to the New Mexico border, in Colorado, on the prairies, after trophy antelope bucks. Let's not waste any time. Let's get out there and get some hunting in. Let's talk about the the big that big 87 inch antelope you shot in Colorado. We've hunted down there lots of years, lots of years, and it. You've how many antelope? Have you, how many? You've killed two Boone Crockett's down there? Yeah, would have been three, but one of them had a broken prong. Still scored like almost 81 with a busted prong. It was probably 84 before it broke his prong off. I mean, their season in Colorado is really short. It's only like four or five days long. And it's in October, oh, and they, usually if the you second week of October. There, you can't get around. No, if they get mud, you're done. You're done. It's just gumbo, but but they can get big bucks, but it has to be on a good year. That year was coming out of a three year drought and it started raining and it rained for, I don't know how long, but it was long enough that stuff grew out on the Badlands. Yeah, they get monsoons in Southern Colorado that come up from New Mexico and Arizona. And if they get them the right time of year, Look out, it's all Gulf of Mexico moisture. yards, John. Gosh, they're going so damn crazy. Where are they going to end up? We're hunting during the first week of October, and the antelope rut is still going strong. Although the rut should be winding down by now, the second cycle does are making it hard on these big bucks to keep their territories. The buck to doe ratio in here is really high. And it's the second week of October and these bucks are still rutting really hard, but I think there's a lot of competition for the does that are in heat. And the big buck is just having a hard time running all those smaller bucks off and keeping them away from his does. So I'm hoping that we can get up there. They moved over the top on us, hoping we can ease up there, that they're rutting so hard they're not really paying attention to us and that big buck will, will make a loop. We're gonna go give it a shot, see if we can get a shot at him. Buck's territories collapsed. It creates an all-out war, every man for himself type scenario for the few remaining does yet to be bred. These two big bucks have been on a collision course all morning, and it finally comes to a head near a water hole where a hot doe has come to drink. We may have to come back in the morning after these two bucks settle down for a closer look. I mean, when you see a big one, one of those 85 pluses, you just know they're big. You don't know if they're 86, 88, you know, you're really nitpicking, but we knew he was, he was big. big. They were in the peak of the rut on the 5th of October, and he had some does, four or five does, and he, what had happened is, is we had been chasing him, trying to get close and bumped him and his does down into this bottom. And there was a bunch of bucks in that bottom and it was the worst place he could have went.
Actually, there's one to the left, left of the two. Our failed stalk ends up bumping the big buck and his hot doe into the next basin over, where a pile of smaller bucks are chasing second cycle does. Turn that going back way. left, he's underneath the metal The gate. big buck is struggling hard to keep the smaller bucks away from his doe. He knows we're here, but at this point, we seem to be the lesser of the two evils. See him? He's the one clear to the right behind the, the one, doe. Just the one doe? Yep. Yeah. I shoot right over his back. Whew, takes off. I was so sick after hunting for two, three days to get even close to him, and then I sent one right over the bow of the boat and into the dirt and watched him run off. Was I was just completely devastated. And while I was all devastated, John's filming. He goes, I think he's coming back. And I look up. In an incredible turn of events, almost two hours later, the buck and his doe work their way back down the draw and right back to within rifle range, giving me a much needed second chance at this monster. That was crazy. Holy smokes. He was running that doe and she wanted to be up in this basin. He had all those little bucks down there he's trying to keep her away from and we just held real still and we got the sun on our back so I think he couldn't really see us. Bam, second time, boom, smashed him. I think the first time I went right over his back. Another antelope in the books. Yeah. Let's go take a look at him. His tops were unbelievable. That's where that, he really stepped. That's what so, that, his tops are from. That separates the his, the men from the boys when it comes thirds. to the antelope. Those tops, those uh, in other words, the last two circumferences. Look at the mass on that dude. Southern Colorado, baby. And when I measured him, he was 16 and an eighth, 16 Bingo. and a quarter. That's. 87 inches. I mean, really deceiving. He's still deceiving. I have him on the wall, and he's still. He, he's still. You look at him, and you, you have to put your hands on him. Well, here's the big Colorado antelope. He is heavy and gnarly. He is definitely a nasty, nasty old buck, a battler of a buck. We watched him fight off two or three other bucks, and just a big old buck. I don't think there's any way this buck is is less than. 82 inches, probably more like the 83, 84 inch mark. I can't even get my hands around his, his uh, bases. Just huge. We're going to get him taken care of and we're going to get out of here and on to the next hunt. So remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt and take trophy big game. We'll see you next week right here on Eastman's Hunting TV.